We have some just basic goals and philosophies when we align our defensive thing. Uh, we're really big on just do your job. Every player has a very sp particular assignment. It's an easy assignment. We try to keep the assignments the same when even we switch from defense to defense. Alignment doesn't change assignment. So if the kids have to line up at a different spot, we, we really work hard to make sure that their assignment doesn't change. Alignment doesn't change assignment. That's really big. Uh, you'll hear our defensive coaches saying that all the time if you came to one of our practices. It's a bend but don't break philosophy. We're coaching against 16 and 17 year old kids and they're going to screw up. And we want things very simple. Um, I've been part of defensive staffs where we were checking and checking out, checking in, and had all kinds of automatics. And if it was up to me, we wouldn't even have the two checks. Right now we've got it down to two checks and, and I can live with that because obviously we need to react and not think. Basically we've evolved. We were, we were a 4-4 team and that's all we did. And there were certain situations and certain personnel and certain defenses that gave us some problems. And so then last year, or two years ago, we went 4-4 and a 3-4 and had a lot of success and we really enjoyed it. And then now we've kind of stumbled upon this 4-2-5 and are, and are really falling in love with that. It's going to become our base defense, I think. The main thing is our foundation of our entire defense is predicated on the inside linebackers reading the offensive linemen. You'll see those reads uh, when we go out to the field. So we are always looking for something with those two inside backers. They don't change their reads. We don't want to get into a 3-3 three, three stack or a 4-3 or anything like that where now the linebackers are shading and, and going to a different type of, a, of assignment. Remember, we, we want to keep those same assignments. And in these three defenses, just about everybody's assignment stays the same as you'll see. It's a lot more seamless than it looks. So we're going to fly through this because we're also going to show you this on the field. So I'm going to go through this pretty fast. But here's our basic 4-4. I will pause here and look at our terminology. Our defense does flop. So this is our stud, our panther, our tackle, and our Sam. They're always on the strong side. Our nose guard, our in, our Mike, and our Willie backer. They're always on the weak side. So our defense does flop. Uh, these guys are jam always their assignment. No matter what defense, their job is to jam and keep these three offensive linemen off of the linebackers. We need these guys flowing and making a lot of tackles. Our nose guard does not have to do that. Our nose guard always shoots one of the A-gaps. We look for a really small wrestling type of kid that's real quick and can just shoot the gap. He does not do any sort of sting or anything like this, but these guys have to be very violent and, 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 and step and get into these guys. Um, this is our, our Panther and our Willie backers are the ones that have to float around a little bit and do some things, and then depending on which coverage, it changes our, our, our alignment, whether we're cover three, cover two, or cover four. So I just wanted to explain the terminology and how the kids line up. So this is just our base 4-4, four, four, uh, one tight end, two running backs. And then let's see how that changes. We go to the 4-2-5. Basically, as you can see, all we did was now we slid the Panther and the Willie back because they're going to drop into a cover three. Corners come up. Now we get no press coverage. But since the corner has help, now he's going to shade outside and try to funnel into to the help. So the shade changes, and we can, get up, we can get up and jam and get a press cover two type of thing because he's got help over the top. But again, on the run flows and everything, as you'll see, we, we haven't changed any of the assignments. And nothing on the interior changed. That's what we liked about it. So now we've got a press cover two with a cover three behind it, but our, our inside guys in the box, nothing changes. We slide back to our three, four. Um, Panther drops all the way back now, and now he's a, he's a true, we got two safety deep. Uh, Willie feels like he's still in base, nothing changes. These three guys, nothing changes. They still feel like they're in the base 4-4. Four, four. Uh, the stud here, um, especially if there's no tight end, now he's got a different technique, and obviously as a D lineman, he probably isn't real familiar with that technique. We find a real, we always look for a real athletic player that doesn't have a problem adjusting this. Um, we've taken this kid and put him in a two-point stance when he had to come in here and he really kind of repped as an outside backer. And you could also do personnel changes if you know on your scouting report that this is going to happen. This is the, this is the only problem that I would say there's a problem going from a 4-4 four, four to a 3-4 is what you do about this player right here. This player right here is one has got to be kind of special because he could be on the line, he could be out here, he could be jam receiver, and he's got flat coverage now. So you're asking a defensive end to cover the flats. So this is like a power forward in basketball, somebody who's pretty athletic on your, on your campus. The rest of the kids, we've had no problems with techniques or, or any kind of things like that.